Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about the new patch for season 24. This is going to be the new preview that just got released over on the official Blizzard blog. But anyways, first off, let's go ahead and go into the stuff that actually matters rapid fire really quick. So um, what's going to be happening is going to be starting on June 17th is when the PTR will be actually happening. And this is going to be a two week period over here. And the main important thing that we're going to be focusing in on is the actual new content here, which is actually ethereals. This is a new super powerful end game item that is going to be more than likely the best in slot as you're only allowed to equip one. But let's go ahead and go over some of these rules and what the uh, qualifications are for you to actually be able to get some of these and uh, what they can actually do. So it's going to be into a new uh, item type in season 24 called Ethereals. It's a new weapon type that allows players will be able to acquire and hunt for their upcoming seasonal journey. Ethereals will roll a powerful set of affixes, a random class weapon legendary power, and a random class passive power. Ethereals will have unique icons, names, types, and sounds are originally found in Diablo 2. For additional details, check out the list below. Okay, so these are kind of like how they work. So first off, Ethereus are account banned and can only be dropped by monsters, chests, and destructibles, but do not require your character to be level 70 to drop. Ethereus can uh, not be acquired through Kanai's Cube or from Kadala, so you can't gamble for them or just start using like the Hope of Cain recipe. And then Ethereal Rarity drop rate is between Ancient and Primal items. So Ancients is like a 1 in 10, Primal is like 1 in 400. That's a very huge range, so maybe like a 1 in 200-ish is kind of the ratio. So these are still going to be very, very rare. And then to top that off, there are three unique Ethereals per class, so that means 21 of them total. So there's 21 new weapons coming out into the game and they do have their own like artwork, which is really cool because it says right here, they'll have the unique icons, names and item types. So that's really, really cool. But um, only one ethereal can be equipped on time. Like I mentioned before, these are super, super powerful. Ethereal, uh, ignore item durability loss. This is actually something very important. Now, if you guys didn't know what the heck is an ethereal, because these were in previous Diablo games, basically an ethereal had this specific modifier that it cannot be repaired. Ethereal items, if they had repairs, one durability or replenishes quantity, this pretty much did not matter. However, what people did do with ethereal items, you can equip it on a mercenary because they would not lose durability, or you could just use it for PvP because then the durability would not go down in Diablo 2. In Diablo 3 though, they're obviously a little bit different, but in addition to that, we don't have confirmation on this, but I do want to mention like what's the point of an ethereal item as how it works is it has higher stats, but once it's destroyed, like the durability goes down, it's gone forever. Now, obviously in Diablo 3, they mentioned over here that it ignores durability loss, which is important. Now in Diablo 2, what did happen to roll on it, the bonus to damage or defenses is 50%. So you get a huge amount of, you know, bonuses to let's say stats or maybe the rolls on it. Like you can roll on a weapon up to 10% damage, Perhaps on an ethereal, it can go to 15%, or maybe the stats that roll like on like the damage on the weapon can go up much higher. Again, it could be up to 50%. It kind of just depends on where they want to go with it. But legendary powers and class passive skills rolled on ethereals uh, do not stack with the same power equipped through Kanai's cube items or skills. Basically, it's the same thing as when we you know would normally have like the ability to add another Kanai's uh, cube slot. You couldn't like double up on it. That's like self-explanatory. But nonetheless, you you can't double up on the legendary power plus having the ethereal power it's technically going to be the same so you can't stack uh, and then ethereals cannot be enchanted transmogrified died reforged or traded so you can't even like trade this if you get this as a drop which is going to be kind of rough because of the next thing that we're going to be talking about very soon which is collecting all of them however you can augment them so that's like the uh you know gem once you level it up you can go ahead and throw it in there and um, you'll be able to get extra of your main stat but collecting all 21 ethereals during season 24 will reward players with a feat of strength ethereal recollection players who accomplish this will have all ethereal transmogrify options available for future seasonal and non-seasonal play so this is really cool this is going to be something permanent uh, that you will be able to unlock on your account however I'm not sure if they're going to have smart loot for these ethereals considering you can't trade them i would assume that you would have smart loot but if you don't um it'll be a lot easier to get but you might not get the ethereal that you want considering if there's going to be three for every class three times seven 21 
Um, that means you basically would have a one in seven chance of it even being for your class, which is kind of rough, but Again, they haven't mentioned if these are gonna roll a smart loot or not. Um, but if not, that means if you want to get this new thing, the Feet of Strength Ethereal Recollection, you have to play every single class, <laughs> which is going to be a, a nice, nice long journey for those of you guys that do wanna unlock this. And then in addition to that, Ethereals only drop in seasonal play and will not transfer to your non-seasonal character when the season ends. So this is like a plus and a minus. Unfortunately, the stuff that you get they will not transfer to your non-seasonal characters. So that's like uh, kind of unfortunate, but perhaps these are gonna be so powerful that they can't just make it into the base game, but maybe they will eventually let this roll over. I remember when we had like the double buff to the rifts for the legendaries that eventually just made into the base game. So who knows, maybe this will go over. And then for the seasonal rewards, they don't have pictures of these yet, but they do say two unique rewards, a portrait frame and a pet will be granted the players who complete season 24 guardian journey please note that their uh, content will not be available during the ptr that's totally fine but if you guys do want to see these rewards as i usually end up making guides to like how to complete these if these are going to be new new rewards because sometimes they do recycle them but if you are new here and you do want to see what these look like i will definitely cover it as soon as it comes out so if you guys want to see it hit subscribe turn that bell if you're new here and as soon as that gets uh, showed off i will also show that off but not only do we get these new ethereals, there's going to be 21 of these new items that are probably going to be the best in slot. Um, in addition to that, we're going to be getting uh, some new stuff with this. Um, and on top of that, since I already mentioned that they don't stack, this whole uh, legendary power, like you could basically think of it as like, you know, whatever weapon that you want, you could just equip it, right? Getting the class passive skills, because we're going to go into um, some other changes here in a moment, but this class passive skill is kind of meh at the end of the day. Like, even with the Hellfire Amulet, these have been way out phased long, long ago. No one really uses the Hellfire Amulet. So these need to be super, super powerful. Not only the legendary powers that roll on it, but in addition to that, the stats need to be super, super powerful. But Let's go ahead and hawk about the monk now, as the monk is getting, I would say, pretty nice little rework, which is with the inner set. So this is what's getting changed with the monk. So mystic ally, fire ally now splits into two splits instead of five, but now all fire allies can split, damage radius slightly increased, and damage increased from 480 to 19, 20% weapon damage. Very randomly specific numbers here, but overall, this is more than likely going to be a buff, but technically uh, it did get changed overall, but the whole inner set is getting changed as well. And then, initially with that, the Mystic Ally, Earth Ally, the damage increase from 380 to 4,500% uh, weapon damage. There's a huge increase on that. And then the Wizard skill change, Mirror Image. Mirror Image icon now displays a counter to display how many mirrors are active. So this is not a buff or nerf. This is more a quality of life, just being able to know how many mirrors you have at one point. Next up, like I said, Inez is getting a huge change. So it's gonna be basically a completely reworked new set here. So with the Inez uh, Mantra four piece set, you gain the base effect of all of your mantras at all times. You gain 5% damage reduction for each mystic ally you have out. And then your mystic allies no longer take damage. With the six piece bonus, you gain the passive abilities of the five ruined mystic allies at all times. Attacking enemies creates your chosen mystic ally, which is, I'm guessing, which is your rune that you select that lasts 15 seconds up to 10 mystic allies. The damage of your mystic allies is increased by 950% for each mystic ally you have out. So pretty much what this means is it's gonna be kind of in a sense of pet build, um, but you're gonna be proccing the damage through Cyclone Strike. So with the Crudus Boost, mystic ally now summons two mystic allies that fight by your side. They deal 300 to 400% increased damage and are able to attack uh, with their active forms longer. And then with the bindings of the lesser gods, this is another item that got a nice little buff here. So enemies hit by your cyclone strike take 300% to 400% increased damage from your mystic ally for five seconds and split fire allies gain five times this bonus. So more than likely fire is gonna be the rune that we want because considering got changed here and that, you know, five times this bonus is too big not to go ahead and use. So the difference in the damage, it's 300 to 4%. And if anyone wants like what it was before, it's one, uh, 150 to 200. So nice little buff overall with that. Now, moving on, there's some developer notes. It just says that we wanted a stronger identity. And then some nerfs over here. So Crusader and Necromancer are taking some nerfs. Now, with the Ages of Valor, this is something that's actually kind of important. So um, with the Ages of Valor set, attacking with Fist of the Heavens empowers you, allowing Fist of the Heavens Fury to deal 125% increased damage for five seconds, and it stacks up to three times. And for those of you guys that actually play this, you might be thinking, wait, hold on. 
this is a buff because it's 125 where previously it was 100%. However, this is actually something that is going to be a little bit different. Because of the way that it works is the, it, I actually have to go to the D3 planner to actually show you guys the difference on it. So the difference on it is the two piece set over here where it says it's 100% increased damage to Heaven's Fury stacking uh, up to three times multiplicatively meaning that all that damage number stacks on top of each other which makes it much much stronger so it is actually going to be a nerf for those of you guys that are wondering what the heck 125 is higher than 100 but they don't stack on each uh, individual one so it's it is a nerf next up though masquerade of the burning carnival bone spear cast by you and your similar lack of steel six thousand percent increased damage this is a huge huge nerf to necro rip this necro build probably because not only does it only deal six thousand and the previous number it was 10,000 simulacrums gained triple this bonus so yeah you lost out on so much damage to the point where this is probably not going to be the best necro build but it depends also you know what are these you know specific ethereals going to be rolling because if the numbers are so high it might not even matter anyways just because you get like so many to shoot out but more than likely it's just such a huge nerf so necromancers i'm sorry press f in the comments for you guys for sure. And then there's just like how to participate over here and then like, you know, log in. Now they don't show off any of the ethereal items right now. This is just kind of like their new preview, but obviously we can speculate with, uh, you know, this idea on what we can actually do. And I wanted to go ahead and mention something really quick. This could actually be really cool, even if the rolls on it are just like the legendary power. Um, because it can roll on a weapon, right, to have that legendary power. This is great for any uh, builds that would run a two-hander inside of the cube because normally you're not going to want to not run your like offhand. So there are certain things in the game that were seen play in the meta of the game. Um, if you wanted to build like a twister build, you would definitely want that increased damage, but you would have to equip it inside of the Kanai's cube, not giving you that extra slot. But with this addition of the ethereal items, we could maybe potentially equip a two-hander. Um, this could be for a lot of different classes. If you want to make a seismic slam barb or even monk with certain things like flying dragon, you could just equip it and then cube something else to make a, another build viable. And so I like this idea for potential theory crafting, but we'll have to wait and see what do these ethereals roll? Because remember how they work in Diablo 2 is the bonus damage is like 50%. And this would be like when we got the first announcement of the primals, which would have even more stats than the ancient items and i remember they ended up reverting this change but this could be the new change here that we are looking forward to um although that one i think uh people didn't like it so they didn't uh, go through with that but that's because you needed to have like every single piece of gear roll to be the primal at that time if you wanted to compete where this you only get to have one so you just need that one item so this is going to be probably the most powerful item that we will be getting in diablo and i like this idea um that we're getting something that is a chase item and hopefully it will be very very powerful because if not i would say these changes for the season um it's at least it's not like you know double bounties or like you know double goblins i like this idea of at least something new and for us to chase and this time it's only available for the people that are playing the seasonal change but anyways if you guys do want to see gameplay or anything related to the, the newer diablo season 24 and you are new here hit subscribe turn that bell and as soon as the gameplay comes out guys i will deliver it for you guys but take care i'm curious to know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section below are you excited to play this season and if so what class do you want to play off these announcements for me i gotta roll monk first because that's where the new content is but anyways take care guys and i'll catch you in the next video peace